Support for today's show comes from Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. You work together or not to survive. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th. Pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta. Games play best on Xbox One. Mm. Mm. Swain, mm. what mm. up? Mm. 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 How are you doing, Swain? Mm. Mm. Doing real good. It's well rested, Swain, this week. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta say, this Swain is ready to fucking go. <laughs> how, uh, how How is this possible? <laughs> what is your secret, powered up Swain? Uh, you just take a week off Destiny. There you go. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, I hope you rested up because- uh, I saw so much of the outside. Oh, man. That is uh, exciting and terrifying. Would you go like pet a squirrel or- uh, <laughs> I actually pet a baby deer. <gasps> no kidding? He came up and ate corn out of my hand. Shit, man. It was great. Love it. All right. Well, hey, there's no Bonesy this week. He's off uh, drinking hurricanes and- um, I see the what Saints. Else? I don't I don't what do you do in New Orleans? Oh, well, you know what I do in New Orleans listening in last week's episode. Uh but just us this week, we're gonna have fun and then we're gonna get right to this interview to kill our onto the show. Crucible Radio, folks and folkarinos. Uh, Swain, are you a folk or are you a folkarino? Hmm. I'm a uh, folkarino. I think so. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too. Hey, hey folks are great, folkarinos. We know that's where it's at. <laughs> uh, we're the show for all things Destiny PvP. Uh, I'm Birds. I'm Swain. Another guy, but he ain't here this week. Yeah. So uh, Just we're going we're gonna to have a little fun up top. So Swain, you 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 took the week off. Uh, it's okay. Withdrawal's not not too bad. <laughs> no, I mean if you uh, if you want to hear why, uh, go back to a lot of callbacks to last episode. Uh, in this episode, uh, go back and listen to. Uh, very briefly, it was just I needed some time off, and it was well spent. Um, I signed on for one thing. I will admit I did go on to Destiny. It was to buy the moat moat gathering emote from Eververse because I like it and fitting. I wanted it and it's perfect and that's all I wanted. So logged on real quick, grabbed it, logged right off. Um, no, it was uh, it was pretty good. I uh, had a full week of doing things that involved uh, spending time with my significant other. Uh, seeing outdoors, doing outdoorsy things, uh, went to the Renaissance Fair, uh, like I said, went to a farm, went to this really cool, like, uh, it's called Longwood Gardens, it's kind of outside of Philadelphia, amazing, lots of outdoor activities, um, yeah, no, it was, it was a good week, um, I did come back to Destiny, really wanted to, like, be hyper focused in certain areas. So it was yeah. highly recommended. It was, you know, it was pretty good coming back and being like, okay, here's where I want to spend my time tonight in the game. Um, I shouldn't be, uh, I don't know. I shouldn't feel the need to go do other things that like, you know, the whole like sign on and just like look at all the bounties and it's like, oh, look at all those chances. Uh, this week I was just like, you know what? I really want to finish this Gambit thing. Uh, I'm going to do that. And I'm only do that. So that's what I did. And uh, right before the show, I got my ship. Oh, you got you a meatball. And I am maybe five matches away from the title. So. Almost there. So excited. Home stretch. Um, Home stretch. After that, uh, I think I'm going to casually do the comp playlist for a little while. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe chase that Lunas Howl. Maybe uh, if it goes quickly, uh, go a little bit further into Not Forgotten. We'll see. I don't want it to turn into what I did before with Gambit. So yeah, jump in, do my thing, give myself plenty of time to sleep, and uh, enjoy it. What about you, birds? How you spend your week? Um, well, I am mono focusing as well. You know, with the exception of a couple daily engrams, I literally played nothing but the comp playlist all week. Um, yeah, just working on that Luna's Howl grind. Got my uh, my first round of hand cannon kills out of the way, which was which was surprisingly like not difficult, but just sort of time consuming. It made me realize that my play style has moved away from hand cannons. Like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, when you're just starting off in the comp playlist, you're low glory, you know, that's that is a great time to start racking up those kills. Um because at that point, I mean, I just I I just pull out the shotgun, I pull out the fighting lion, I pull out the play of the game. Um and I found myself really liking pulse rifles where, you know, I'm not trying to commit as hard. I'm not trying to, you know, if you're playing countdown, right, or you're playing survival, like you really got to stay alive and being able to hang back a little bit farther with a pulse rifle, do some team shotting and, uh, you know, really play it safer till you get that first pick. Uh, it was a bit of adjustment going to it, to the hand cannon, getting those kills in the process. I have, um, I have really researched the shit out of what I want from a hand cannon. Um, <laughs> Ace of spades is fantastic. It's great, but I love, I love I love Fighting Lion. I love it. It's so funny. It's so viable. I <laughs> it's just a hoot. So I've got a pair of roles I've been using. Um I've got a Better Devils with opening shot and outlaw and the uh range masterwork on it with uh targeting jester. Oh, That's pretty go. handy. Got most of my kills with that. Um, but I also have a duke with both. This one's got it all, man. It's got true sight. It's got opening shot. It's got ricochet rounds. It's got moving target. It is really quite sticky, I have to say. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm enjoying it. I get fewer kills with it unless my aim is really on point. Um, but those have been fun, you know. I've been I've been mixing it up there, using all kinds of stuff in the other slots just to. Uh, you know, pass the time. And I got to say, you know, you know, what's been like the best part about this comp playlist for me, no question, no question, is this Luna Howells quest made me go like, you know what? I don't care if I win or lose because I, I just don't need wins right now. What I need is hand cannon kills. kills. And in fact, if I lose it, that means that, you know, my glory goes down and my next lobby is going to be that much easier. I'm going to go off that much harder and get that many more kills. Like winning is nice, but I just like, I, at this point, I just don't care if I lose. I just don't care. It's <laughs> fine. Like, I'll go in solo queue, go do whatever. Like, goof around, pull out, you know, some some absurd uh, some absurd hand cannon with a terrible roll on it just to see if maybe, oh, maybe this is the secret sauce. Maybe this is really good. I'm going to find a sleeper or something. Um, but just go in and goof and have fun with it. And for me, taking away that sort of pressure of the comp playlist has been such a game changer. Uh, with the exception of fucking countdown, which I can never play again for the rest of my life and be happy, um, it is it has become my favorite playlist. It, at at this point, solo queuing, I would solo queue comp before I'd solo queue quick play, which is a crazy thing to say. But huh. um, when you're, I'm um, you know when when you're at that that glory, I'm at like oh, fucking twelve hundred or whatever right now. Um, it is it is just fine. And as you you get higher up, you start to find teammates who you know, are going to hop in chat who are going to you know, kind of know what to do. Um, and it has made me better, a better player in that sort of comp game mode mindset, which is very different from quick play, sure. which you, you just have to put in your hours on it. You just have to get comfortable and know, okay, this is what I should be doing right now. So, uh, yeah, all that. And then also just nonstop fighting lion every chance i get it's <laughs> it's so great i'm still i'm still grinding for that perfect better devil's role i don't know why that's calling to me so much but i know i can get better i know i can get a better one you know what i don't want i don't want i don't want kill clip i don't want i don't want rampage i don't want these conditional things <laughs> i just want the one that's going to work really good on that first kill give me range maybe a uh, shot moving target please maybe next week we'll talk about it a little bit more 
um, because we have a really jam-packed interview coming up with Cammy. Um, but there was like some changes that happened this week uh, to the game as a whole. Yeah, and uh, I think some of them pretty good, pretty good. They kind of, uh, they uh, made Fallout's life a lot more difficult. Um, that's for sure. But my favorite change I want to bring up right now, if you hadn't gotten Malfeasance and you have thrown it in your vault, take it back out. It is the best thing in Gambit right now. <laughs> it is better. It's more useful than Sleeper. It's more useful than th- like Thousand Voices. It three taps invaders, and you know invaders have like overshields, and they are much stronger. It'll three tap them super easy. And it's great because there's so many taken in Gambit, like whether it's the blockers that show up or when the primeval spawns, it's so good for that. And if someone else is running it at the same time, your shots work together. So the fifth, I think it's the fifth shot of your combined shots does the explosion thing. So it's like super easy at taking down the uh, protectors. Pull out malfeasance. That's my advice. They changed it. It's great. All right. Well, hey, let's 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 not let's not waste another moment. I want to get to this interview with with Cammy. This guy, he 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 knocked it out of the park. And I think, um, in addition to being just a, a fun and very informative interview, there's something about Cammy, man. He's <laughs> like this this game. You know, you could look at Destiny and go, look, it's a shooter. It feels great. It's got hand cannons. It got it's got shotguns. What more do you need? No, Destiny is about about possibility, a setting where where wizards and cowboys and ninjas and aliens can all hang out with each <laughs> other or try and kill each other, where there's crazy future guns that that have got, I don't know, that light up or that are alive and breathe and do freaky things. And there's no other player that is exploring what this game has to offer and finding novel and interesting and funny and super duper effective ways to put them together. And doing them very well. Doing not them like half-assing it. Very, very well. There is no more Destiny Destiny player than Cammy in my book, and this is such a good interview, so let's get right to it. But first, you know, we got it. Yes, it's over. This week, we got music from The Fall Will Probably Kill You. Straight out of Midland, Ontario. Check them out. The Fall Will Probably Kill You. Bandcamp.com. If you're not familiar with how this works, every week we play music from you, the listener. We play your bands, your electronic projects, your side projects. We play it all. And uh, yeah, the music we play here reflects what you guys like to listen to and what you like to make. So beautiful thing it all starts when you send an email crucibleradio at gmail.com welcome back to the show everyone we have a wonderful guest this week He's been on the show a few times. Uh, he is probably my favorite YouTuber. Uh, Cammy Cakes, welcome back. Hey, glad to be back, as always. Glad to have you. Uh, well, hey, let's let's start off. I want to I wanna dive right in. Let's talk about some <laughs> Bars gear. is getting dirty real quick. I, <laughs> we got a lot to get through. I got a list, man. Um, you are, hey, look, not it's not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone has uh, grinded it out, but you have not forgotten and you've had some time to figure it out. I was hoping you could start off just sort of by telling us, um, let's talk about hand cannons, but let's talk about Luna's Howl and let's talk about not forgotten. They're similar, but they're not the same gun. Um, Kind of walk me through what the differences are. Luna's Howl is going to be snappier, whereas not forgotten is going to 
be less snappy but have more range. And mm-hmm. me personally, for PvP, I'm going to lean more into Not Forgotten because I feel that the recoil bounces a little more. So the more I use it, the more I feel like I can control it. So that's even more of a reason for me to use it. And that trade-off being a couple extra meters of range. Tell me a little bit about the the grind to to get that Not Forgotten. I mean, that's, that's it's a big jump for a lot of folks. Do you think it's worth it for the average player? Here's the Here's, I think, the beauty of the design of the weapon. It's by the time you obtain Not Forgotten, you're probably already a pretty good shot with it. So it's rewarding enough in that sense. So on the grind to get Not Forgotten, by the time you get it, you will be good enough to abuse it. And to me, I feel like I'm borderline cheating when I use it. <laughs> when I watch you play with it, it seems like you're borderline cheating. But you do. Um, what, what about other hand cans? I mean, random rolls have really changed the lay of the land now. You can get a, a decent hand, you know, decent gun out of a lot of different hand cannon models. Um, what, what sort, what, you know, what archetypes, what perks, what, uh, what particular rolls are, are standing out for you? Uh, I've been really using the exotic hand cannons, Ace of Spades and Sturm. Both have pros and cons, even a Crimson every now and then. But if we're talking legendaries with random rolls, the Waking Vigil is the only 150, and that's in the energy slot. You can get a pretty forgiving roll almost on the same level as Ace of Spades. You can go for like opening shot, slide shot, ricochet rounds. It doesn't have the range of Ace of Spades, but it has the forgiveness in a sense. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't tried Waking Vigil out. But have you done much with uh, Sunshot as well? Do you think that competes? Oh, Sunshot definitely can still hang. Uh, my boy, Special K, dude, I see him rock that all the time. He was our guest last week. Oh, yes. Like, viewers out there, if you haven't seen Sunshot action, Special K, dudes, your dude. But uh, anyhow, the exotics, they all can compete. I know we see a lot of Ace of Spades out there, but there is a situation for every exotic. Is there any primary, like, uh, kinetic hand cannons that you think can hang? Um, I still use Midnight Coup. <laughs> and the Duke. Oh, the Duke. <laughs> the Duke's one of those guns that make me wish random rolls weren't in the game because I just want <laughs> every 110 to be a Duke. I have no reason to ever use a Primina. So what are you looking for uh, on a Duke roll? I want two Duke rolls. One I want with Kill Clip Rangefinder Ricochet, Range Master Work, of course, so you can basically use it as a sniper rifle. <laughs> and with the Hunter Marksman's Dodge, you don't necessarily have to reload it. You just get your kill, Hunter Marksman Dodge, Kill Clip activates, and then you have your sniper rifle. But <laughs> otherwise, so I would like to see Opening Shot and Rampage with Ricochet Rounds because the way that Opening Shot works is it it pretty much magnetizes your bullet to the face, even if you aim almost waist or belly button level. And since the 110s have naturally more range, I feel like that effect will be even more noticeable. So there's a perk I want to ask you about, because I was sort of going through all my hand cannon rolls, and um, I'm playing with a controller, and hand cannons just feel can feel like not that precise, hard to kind of dial in. I want as much help as I can get. Um, and I had a Duke roll that had the ricochet rounds, had the range master work and uh, opening shot, but it also had moving target on it, which is going to uh, increase your, your movement speed and your target acquis- acquisition when you're aiming down sights. Is moving target a valuable perk for you or are there other perks you would rather have? Even on mouse and keyboard, I still find moving target very valuable. But on the Duke, I think the rampage kill clip might overtake that and also having the range finder for more range for me personally. Sure. I don't remember exactly so, what slot moving target goes in. I think as I was, uh, that's, that's the the final slot. As I was sort of trying to, to put together a, uh, a build on my warlock, I felt myself wanting more mobility so I could kind of get that strafing happen. I could, I could win more to sort of, you know, dueling gunfights as I'm trying to land headshots. I've been in that um, dilemma too. And it's because of the super mods being so important taking over what usually goes into mobility. I used to put mobility mods on everything, right? But now (laughs) super mods are so valuable and the game changers and competitive that I have to sacrifice those. And now I'm wishing I have more mobility. So moving target definitely makes a case, even though it's only slight. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think of that way. When when you're putting a uh, when you're putting a mod on a hand cannon, I mean, it seems like there's there's really two contenders 
Um, what's going to be your preference there? And does that vary from yeah. gun to gun? Um, I'm probably going to go Icarus almost every single time. But targeting adjuster, I think, is a strong case to be made. Is that even like on the 180s? You're going to use the Icarus? Now, I know I'm wrong when I say this. A lot of people tell me that 180s have perfect inner accuracy. And I just will not trust anybody <laughs> until I test it myself. And I haven't done the <laughs> testing. So I slap an Icarus mod on there. So that way, if I miss in the air, I get to get mad at myself for being bad at aiming. I don't get to blame <laughs> the game because I have an Icarus mod on there. If I miss, I just say, well, I need to aim better. Not, man, I got screwed by RNG. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there you go. You, you know who's at fault. Um, all right, well, let's, let's go through the uh, through the other primary weapons. I mean, we've got scout rifles. We've got pulse rifles. We've got auto rifles. I mean, you're mostly seeing pulse rifles out there, but I mean, sort of for for your other choices, I mean, what do you think is a contender right now? As far as archetypes? It depends on the archetype, right? Yeah, I mean, we don't really need to know too specific onto the gun, but like, what do you think is the most effective in each I'll one? I'll give you the lowdown. I think every type of weapon is competitive, but not every archetype within them. So there's an auto great, rifle, there's great. a pulse, there's a scout. I think there's one of each that can hang, but it's not every archetype. And I'll just go through those quickly. Like briefly looking at what I got in my Destiny Item Manager, literally this <laughs> week I have made it so that whenever I click the PvP loadout on the Item Manager, it throws a lot of weapons in my inventory that I consider competitive so that I can deal with pretty much any situation, any range. Oh, okay. I want to hear this. So uh, yeah, we're gonna no start more me throwing out categories. Yeah, auto Walk rifles because I think they're you know the underdogs in this meta. This is the raid one, age old bond. It's like the Suros regime, very very slow firing, and it has a pretty competitive time to kill. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I know it's competitive. Anyhow, mine has kill clip, dynamic sway. Uh, ricochet rounds and an arrowhead break to keep the re recoil online. And then I also threw a counterbalance mod and it is a laser beam. All you have to do is trace the head hmm. and then kill clip after you do that. And it makes it even easier. You can actually go for body shots. Do you think auto rifles are more viable on mouse and keyboard than on controller? I think you can make the case for that, but I've seen Drewski do some disgusting things with the Suros. That's true. Yeah, he's, he's fine. And if he can okay. do it, I think with enough practice, most of us can. Uh, debatable, but okay. Um, all right, Leah, let's, let's keep rolling. What else you got in there? Uh, pulse rifles, surprisingly, every archetype a pulse rifle can hang. But I still lean towards the Redrick's broadsword. Specifically, I have arrowhead break, ricochet rounds, or high calibers. I got the, you know, god roll of both of them. Do you think... Do you think Redrix is made viable by that perk, or would you use one of those slow firing archetypes even on a, a non Redrix gun? Both of Redrix and Luna's Hell ruin the archetypes for me in the sense that every time I'm using something that's not those guns within the same archetype, I'm thinking, why not just use Redrix? Why not just aim slightly better, <laughs> get the Desperado, get the faster time to kill, get the Magnificent Hell two tap or something? Yeah, so hard to beat, hard to beat. Yeah, I mean, obviously the caveat to Desperado is you have to hit him in the face, but I feel like I should be aiming for the face. A two tap with it. It happens more often than not for me, but I can't speak for everybody. And you can carry Desperado across the map, which is the real strength of it over Kill Clip, because Desperado is dependent on procking Outlaw, which stays for a couple seconds. And you can reproc Desperado at the end of kill uh, at the end of Outlaw, sorry, right when it's about to uh, disintegrate, disappear. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed that when I was first watching sort of gameplay, I, I didn't understand like why why are you reloading and what are you doing that for? It is literally any time you reload while Outlaw is active that you're going to get that benefit from it. Oh, there you go, folks. Write that down. What about scouts? Scouts, I like the 150s. I know that the RPM is bugged, but still three shots. You sort of use it like a long-range hand cannon. I know they zoom a lot. I know they take flinch more. But the trade-off is if you can overcome those two things, you get to use something with hand cannon time to kill, but at any range. Is there a perk that you're going to use on that, like explosive rounds or something that, that makes them more viable? 
when there's a lot of other stuff that can outgun you at mo- most ranges? Jade Rabbit, Polaris Lance are very, very competitive. I always have Polaris Lance in my inventory because they sort of play a guerrilla warfare play style like I did in season three, where your goal isn't to win a gunfight. It's just to hit a headshot, disengage, hit a headshot, disengage. And when you proc that perfect fourth, that's when you commit. The, uh, do you find that the break tech is any useful too? Like I, I, I enjoy it from time to time, uh, depending on the map. The Braytech Scout's pretty good, but I always lean towards Motion to Compel because it has Kill Clip, Moving Target, and a perk called Swap Mag. So I'll even just like shoot the floor until I'm close to the end of the magazine so that I can take more advantage of that perk. Hmm. Plus, Is if you're shooting the motion floor... Motion to Compel a year one? Yes, that, it's a year one, one from Trials. Oh. I was going to say, plus shooting the floor, sometimes people think I'm in an engagement and you see someone with like a shotgun in hand run around the corner and you're like, <laughs> mistakes were made. Uh, all right. And that leaves us with two more. Do you have uh, some SMGs or some sidearms in uh, in that PvP loadout? One sidearm kinetic, one SMG in energy. Well, let's hear the it. kinetic sidearm is going to be Smuggler's Word. And I think Rampage slash Kill Clip makes this weapon. Rampage makes it a clean two burst instead of a three burst kill. And that's a pretty significant chunk off the TTK on top of the fact that they're already a pretty fast TTK because they're meant to slay shotgunners in close quarters. And so as long Mm -hmm. as you can do that, like float back, backpedal while shooting, you should be able to shut down the initial person, no problem. But that second person you run into won't even know what hit them. And the SMG is going to be the bad reputation. Think of it as the energy entiope. I don't know how we pronounce it on the show, but (laughs) I have a very identical role to the entiope. Ricochet round, Zen moment or slide shot. I have two of them and kill clip. For for SMG, I mean, do you find yourself preferring Rampage over kill clip or kill clip over Rampage? On the smugglers, I like Rampage because... I don't have to reload it or anything, and it's still going to make it a two burst. Mm -hmm. Kill clip won't make it a one burst. That's the way I look at it. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, All right. Well, I think, oh, do you, uh, (laughs) I'm, I'm hoping it's the case, but I would not be surprised either way. Uh, Do you have a bow in your PVP loadout? I have a bow in my kinetic slot and it's not wish ender. Using no turning back. No turning back. There you go. Yes. Yes, I, well, is it the the original role that you get in like the beginning of the the story? What's missions? the original role before I gush about this gun? Okay, that's uh, going to be hip fire, explosive head, snapshot, and uh, fiberglass arrow shaft with the high okay. tension string. Same role, no explosive head. What are you? Uh, what what perk are you using in that slot? Let me click on it and check. Fiberglass. So I'm making them like really itchy when I shoot them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um well that's that's good to hear because I am I am a big fan of this one although I'm surprised to know that that you're not a fan of explosive head. I've always liked that one for the little bit of uh collateral oh, Okay, I see now people. that I'm looking at it. There's a choice between snapshot or explosive head. Yes. Got it. Mm. And are you gravitating towards snapshot over explosive head? Snapshot, yes. That doesn't mean I think explosive head is bad. That just means that snapshot more or less fits my play style. Fair enough. And I didn't think the bow would fit it when uh, trying out Forsaken for the first time. Well, tell me a little bit about that. Like, when are you going to pull the bow out in PvP? It's when hit and run with the scout doesn't hit hard enough. It's when I need something that hits very, very hard so my teammate only needs one bullet to clean up. So that's primarily going to be something where you're your team shooting, you're sort of working and positioning with your teammates so you're not on the hook for getting getting the kill yeah, by yourself. Yeah, I almost never want to be in a position to where it's going to require two shots. Or if it's going to require the second shot, I want to be able to instant fire it and like snap and aim towards the sky so it just like arcs into them. Mm-hmm. And I need to be disengaging on that shot immediately, not even looking to see if it hit, even though it would be really satisfying to just see an arrow to the knee and him fall <laughs> because of the arc type. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you you hear a little jingle if you got it, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, that sound cue is super loud. <laughs> like, you wouldn't think from just doing the quick shot. Yeah, no, still great. Music to my ears. Cammy, tell me that double primary is still viable. Well, tell everybody 
Absolutely. We have a strategy on my team called Pass the Ball to the Italian. <laughs> what? Go on. Have you ever seen the movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell? I feel like I have once. Okay, well, I, I'll give you like the summary uh, as far as this part goes. So Will Ferrell is coaching his child's soccer team, and his, his soccer team sucks. And so they get some muscle on the team. They get these Italian immigrant boys to play. And their only strategy is to pass the ball to the Italians so the Italians can score. And this gets them to, like, the finals of the soccer tournament. <laughs> and so this is the strategy. And as you can imagine, pass the ball to the Italians means feed whoever is really, really good with a special weapon on your team infinity ammo. <laughs> because everybody's going to be dropping special. And that's the problem with running double primary is that even though you kill them and you don't give them special, if you're too effective and kill them like in their spawn, they're able to pick up their own special ammo off their corpse. <laughs> but if you have one Italian to pass the ball to, he can even just start emptying the ammo just so they can't have it. Gotcha. Is that person going to be running you know, double shotguns or, or, you know, a shotgun and a sniper. You like. actually can run that. And I've been experimenting with shotgun snipe, snipe cold heart, and all these like really weird setups, even grenade launchers and stuff you can mix in there. But I think that double primary and even double special have situational uh, benefits. Sturm and Drang hits, hits like a truck. I mean, with uh, inertia override and, empowering riff you can do some dirty dirty things with it but the pass the ball to the italian works really well with rapid fire weapons because you have so much ammo you can straight disrespect empty an entire mag of shotgun or snipe on one person and not even be at a disadvantage <laughs> i mean outside of that case right like is there a double primary loadout that's viable when you're solo queuing when you're in rumble or is it are you better off there with with something that can one hit kill I think you can uh, run with a double primary and rumble, especially if someone's running rampant with the shotgun. But it's kind of dependent on everyone else to give them a fair fight, right? If you have weak players with one strong player in the lobby, he's probably still going to have ammo forever. But if everyone's on a real, like, even skill level, I think that a double primary in there might throw off their entire flow and be like, where's my shotgun ammo? You're supposed to give me it. I need yep. it. Then you spawn up near near them and you're like, I got you for three minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to be running a shotgun from time to time. Let's talk about special weapons and let's start with shotguns. Um, and we're actually, this is an interesting time to be talking to you about shotguns because uh, we just had a balance patch drop. And one particularly prominent thing addressed in this balance patch is a nerf to full choke, which was, you know, you go ask Fallout about it. The be all end all, you know, the absolute <laughs> top thing you must have on a shotgun um, so talk us through the world of shotguns post this patch. Is full choke still a necessity? It's not a necessity, but now another option. I'm going to say both rifle, barrel, and full choke, they're, they're close enough that both of them are, are options. Do you feel like, are they interchangeable? Do they have different identities for you? They do, and it's really hard to put into words, but if I had to draw like a graphic real quick, it would show like full choke with a steep decline, whereas rifled is just like a squiggly line because it always has the potential to underperform or overperform. Hmm. But then you got to take the average, and that's how you get your consistency. I think both can hang, and that's all that's to it. Maybe between the individual archetypes, full choke might make more of a difference, but I'm not going to be sad if I see a rifled barrel god roll. So speaking of archetypes, um, what are, well, I guess, I mean, let's just talk about guns. There's not that many shotguns in play right now. What stands out for you? Dust Rock Blues pairs so nicely with Not Forgotten. And that's because even when they're slightly out of that one shot kill range, I know I'm going to be able to clean up with the Not Forgotten. Whereas with the Rapid Fire, I still might have to hit them twice. Is it the, the ready time that makes it a good pair or what, what particular makes it good? Straight up the impact. Okay. It's just <laughs> a good cleanup. It hits harder at a range and so they have less health, meaning my Luna's how will probably kill him in one shot. And that means the next target is going to get two tapped. Yeah. Keep that, keep that right on rolling. Um, I mean, 
you know, everyone was doing that, uh, that mind benders grind. I mean, do you think there's viability with other shotguns? Are there any others that stand out for you? Curated roll mind benders has opening shot. And I talked about it earlier on the hand cannons, right? How you can aim at their belly button, sort of get a headshots. I was playing a breakthrough today. I, I felt like I missed the person entirely with my mind benders. And I mean, I guess the name makes sense. My mind bent the shot into him. This was like straight out of <laughs> Wanted or whatever that movie is. I curved the bullet with that opening shot. <laughs> and it was lethal enough to one bang him. So feel free to test it if you want to. Call me a liar. But I think opening shot lends itself a lot more than just range. I, I mean, that makes sense, right? I mean, you know, opening shot on like... I don't even know if they have it on auto rifles, maybe not so much, but on a shotgun, it feels like most of your shots are going to be opening shots. So, I have opening shot on my kinetic snipe, the bite of the fox. It's aggressive. Same exact reasoning because it pairs with the Luna's how body shot in case I get flinched. But anyway, it has opening shot on it. So I threw an Icarus mod so that the accuracy benefits of opening shot stack with the accuracy benefits of Icarus. And I did the exact same thing on my mind benders. So now... I never feel at a disadvantage in the air. It kind of seems like whenever the gunsmith sells Icarus mods, you're stocking up. Absolutely. There's, I mean, like, is there, is there a weapon type that you would not prefer Icarus on? Is there something else where there's just a, a clear preference over Icarus? On most sidearms and SMGs, I don't really feel like they need it. Because at the range that you're going to be challenging in the air, it's going to be pretty close. And I imagine that cone isn't so unforgiving that it requires Icarus. Interesting. But something like an auto rifle, like that age-old Vaughn I mentioned earlier, it sucks in the air. And maybe Icarus would be good, but then I have to give up a counterbalance mod, which makes it so controllable in the first place that I'm able to use it confidently and competitively on the ground. So... Even though I would like it in addition to, it cannot replace my counterbalance. Fair enough. Well, you mentioned your, your bite of the fox. Let's talk about sniper rifles. What's, uh, what, what's important there? And, and do you think sniping is, is particularly viable at high-level play right now? I'm going to say nearly essential at the highest levels to have one or two snipes in there that put the fear of God in these players that they can be <laughs> one-shot at any distance at any time. We've asked this question of a couple people recently, and I feel like we've gotten a different set of answers for sort of what role sniping, you know, like what form of sniping really is viable right now. Because, you know, you have the version where you're you're quick scoping and you're using it as, you know, you're no scoping, using it as a close range shotgun. You have the version where you're picking a, an angle and you're, you know, you're just, you're hard scoping, you're waiting for someone to make a mistake and run out. Um, I mean, in everything in between, I mean, are these all viable? Do you think there's one you gravitate towards or one that's more important in competitive play? I think it's good to have a mixed bag because as soon as somebody realizes what you're doing, they're either never going to peek that angle again. They're going to be jumping over it, flying past it too fast for you to react to. They're going to be flinching you. They'll be prepared. So as soon as you start mixing it up a little bit, they can't really anticipate it. And so you'll have the advantage. Um, and so everything you just said, I think, should be in a sniper's <laughs> bag of tricks. Great. Um, another question I've asked a couple times recently, and I haven't really gotten an answer, although if there was anyone keeping track of these, it would probably be you. In D1, we had such an identity with our sniper scopes, and it feels like that's kind of changed a bit. Is there any sniper scope in particular that stands out for you, or are there more important things you're looking for on a gun? Very, very, very short... Um, I guess, tangent on what I look for in snipers. Please. I pick one sniper and then I stick to it. Even if it's not the best, it's just because that's the most uh, hours I put on a snipe. That's the sniper I'm most attuned with. And so I stick with it. I want the handling to feel the same. I want the perks to be the same. And so the bite of the fox, it has a low handling, but I mitigate that with snapshot. And of course, the opening shot just rewards me with free hits sometimes. And it helps that inner accuracy. So it's the full package. I pair it with Fighting Lion. Um, sorry, you mentioned that. Um, Bonesy was not able to be here tonight for some reason or other. 
but he did want me to say, uh, can you guys make sure to tell him I am Cammy Cakes Jr. now that I use Sniper and Fighting Lion, <laughs> and also I'm sad I'm missing a Cammy ep again. It's like he's avoiding you. Very suspicious, I gotta I say. Smell bad. Um, the <laughs> the uh, hey, it's the internet, man. I don't believe that to be the case, but there's no way he could possibly be bothered by it. Um, I saw a clip Bonesy posted of uh, Fighting Lion and Sniper the other night. I have been loving my Fighting Lion, uh, especially in competitive play. Um, talk to me a little bit about this combo. This very silly. But still, it sounds unorthodox. Combat. It sounds like very memey, like you're almost disrespecting your opponent. But I assure you, it is one of the top competitive builds. Come on, man. Go on. <laughs> Go ahead and back that statement up. <laughs> even, even some people, when I bring this up, they're like, no, 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 Cammy. This is a competitive loadout for just you and you only because you're like some geometry god. And I'm not. It's just you got to think. Can you just tell us what you got? In high school, in geometry, <laughs> what I did was your grade? A, but I did not hold that streak for all my maths. Just geometry. <laughs> Stupid algebra too. No, but anyhow, the hardest thing to do with the snipe right is to hit headshots, and that's why it's you know regarded as the skillful thing in our community. But with the fighting lion, you can almost guarantee that you have chip damage leading into an engagement, or if you hit them with the snipe and they disengage, you can guarantee that with the forgiving blast radius of the fighting lion, it's going to find them and do that requisite, what, 40, 60 damage of the bite of the fox. And mm-hmm. keep in mind that the 100 damage splash radius is pretty forgiving, so you're damn well right that it's going to find them if they're tagged by a snipe. And in reverse, if you know you have to hit a body shot instead of a headshot, it is so much easier to just aim center a mass and pull the trigger maybe even reacting before they have a chance to flinch you. Not to mention, chest is a bigger target, so even if they do flinch you, there's a good chance you still hit them. All right, folks, I hope you're enjoying this interview. I, I know you're enjoying this interview. It's a blast, but we need to take just a moment to pause to thank our sponsor this week. That's Fallout 76. You got it, baby. Bethesda, they made Skyrim. They made Fallout 4. They know what they're doing, and... They're welcoming you to Fallout 76. This is the online prequel to the Fallout series. Under the threat of nuclear annihilation, you'll experience the largest, most dynamic world ever created in the legendary Fallout universe. You got your Pip-Boy. You got your Nuka-Cola caps. I play other games every now and then. I know some stuff. (laughs) He knows. I know a couple things. Reclamation Day 2102, 25 years after the bombs fall, you and your fellow vault dwellers chosen from the nation's best and brightest emerge in a post-nuclear America. Play solo or join together as you explore, quest, build, and triumph against the Wasteland's greatest threats. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th. Pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta. Games play best on Xbox One. Okay, I wanted to talk about more guns and maybe we can come back, but this is this is too interesting a topic. What I love about that pairing is that those guns need each other. That if you are just if you are holding on to that fighting lion full time, you're going to be in trouble in the same way that if you miss that first snipe and you're trying to get the second and there's more than one person shooting back at you or one person who knows where you are, you're probably in trouble. Um, And I think this is something in particular watching your gameplay that you really excel at. You're pairing these weapons together in a way where you're just switching back and forth between them so fluently um, that it it feels like you're using, you're using different weapons. Like they, they, they work together in a way that makes something more important than just, yeah, I've got a grenade launcher and a sniper rifle. Um, I guess I, if you'd like to talk about that, go for it, because I want to hear about it. But I'm curious to know, like, sort of what other combos do you see there as having real synergy? Um, chaperone, Luna's Hell. I mean... Or Not m- Forgotten. Makes a lot of sense, but w- why? Uh, chaperone will dump truck any shotgunner who wants to attempt to get in shotgun range. And for outside of chaperone range, you got Not Forgotten slash Luna's Hell. Sounds sounds about covered. I mean, both of those are are precision weapons too, right? Like your aim's got to right. be on point. You got to be hitting those headshots. And this is why you get enhanced targeting on your helmets. <laughs> there you go. 
Um, well, what, what, what else? Thinking. Yeah. I, I, you know, and actually, oh, I'm just looking at like what I have in my inventory. Yeah. You would think the double grenade launcher would be better or the triple grenade launcher would be better than the snipe line. But to me, it's not. It's being able to have the versatility of that instant kill at any range and then the lion that could find you around cover. Rather than someone sees I have two grenade launchers, guess what they're going to do? They're going to run as soon as you shoot it. Yeah. And then they might insta kill you when you have your pants down. Well, I think I think there's something to be said too for for having for using a gun like the fighting lion because it's a surprisingly versatile weapon, right? Like if you go head to head with a shotgun, you're probably going to be in trouble. But again, if your aim is on point and you're ready, you know, with the follow-up melee or whatever, that you can almost kind of use it as a shotgun at close range. You've got to get that direct hit, but... um, Absolutely, but I would almost recommend building your overall loadout, including your subclass and whatever, some backup plans to maybe give you an alternative close quarters option. And that could be synthesis, that could be a shoulder charge, that could be the grenade from the Voidwalker... You know which one I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more <laughs> uh, interesting. So, so would you say that you're using Fighting Lion for cleanup, for damage around corners, for goofy stuff at range, for splashing a, a group of enemies, and that when it is that close quarters range, you're either switching to something else or time to bail because you're fucking up. Yeah, more or less. Um, I would also add that whether or not my team wants to admit it or not, it's sort of become an unofficial laser designator because they trust my shot with it. (laughs) Pretty much anywhere they see a a grenade flying across the map, they're like, yeah, that's going to hit. Let me go clean it up. (laughs) Good. (laughs) And it sort of just keeps the team cohesive and direct, knowing exactly what to focus on. All right. Well, hey, I, I, we, we got to get it out. I mean, this is, this is gold. Quickly run through. You, you talked about your PVP loadout. What else have you got in there that we haven't talked about yet um, that you think stands out? And what do you like about it? I like the Aaron Soul Fusion with backup plan. Hey. It, gives, it gives you that plan C vibe from Destiny 1. It's my favorite fusion rifle. That will actually make people rage. They don't expect to die to fusions and what people call this shotgun meta. It's so perfect right now for the shot, like all these shotgun rushers, like to be just so far out of range while they are just rushing you and they think you're doing nothing. Yep. I mean, really though, I have mine with a handling mod and I'm finding I can get two backup plans uh, shot. And that just so (laughs) perfectly pairs with the fact that you always spawn with With two two bullets. And so you go for under pressure or high impact reserves. I, I know you can get both at the same time, but with this backup plan roll, I got the under pressure. So they're naturally more stable or constrained. And then I also put a counterbalance mod on it. So it's just easy tracking. Oh, that's a nasty roll. I'm so jealous. The only thing that it struggles on is people at certain resiliences because it doesn't exactly hit that 200 mark from the four bolts or five bolts. It gets mm-hmm. a five bolt based on. The balancing, I was thinking D1 there for a second, but it struggles sometimes and even out of range. But of course, because it's so consistent with that under pressure and counterbalance, all the bolts might hit them anyway and just wipe them from existence. And it happens more often than not, and that's why it always is in my inventory. Telesto is also there as well. A lot of funny strategies. I, you're liking that. Telesto. Interesting. I haven't heard a lot about Telesto recently. Uh, well, if, like the past month and a half. Oh my God. It's like people aren't ever talking about it. Uh, well, so let me ask. Uh, I think we've talked about almost every weapon type. I mean, we've always got some fun stuff in the power option. Um, but you mentioned them earlier. What about trace rifles? Uh, that's that's reserved solely for past the ball of the Italian. <laughs> okay. Okay. Every time I use it, I'm thinking it's going to range a time to kill in between like 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 ish, depending on what you're doing. Even if you stack it with inertia override and empowering it for something, marginal benefits, right? Every time I'm using it, I have to trace my target perfectly without missing a single shot. Or I can just use a snipe to kill them instantly as a special. I can use a Luna's Howl, not forgotten. <laughs> and trace three headshots, and the damage output per shot is better. So if I peek in between cover, awesome. I'm not heavily punished 
for missing a shot. It's still a 180. It'll still kill them in a second if I miss. And it's not even a special. Well, you heard it here first. Cami Cakes would love it if Bungie nerfed trace rifles. Go figure. <laughs> They're still very, very fun. And nothing is more satisfying than melting somebody with a cold heart or Prometheus lens and just snap targeting onto the next person and not even have your RPM slow down. Yeah. That's when you get the real hate mail, just like turn off the aim lock and you're just like, no, I was lucky. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, you, you've talked about a couple of these already, but I think like on the psychological front, you know, this is a quote unquote shotgun meta, right? There's a lot of shotguns out there and a lot of people going from alive to dead quite quickly. Um, I feel like considering where it's been in the past, like the calls to nerf shotguns have been a little bit quieter this go around because it's just, it's not as much fun. We got our full choke nerf, all freaked out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sort of knowing that you're going to be going up at least a couple shotguns, if not exclusively shotguns in the Crucible right now, uh, what are people doing wrong? How, how should we be avoiding death by shotgun? You would think shotguns are aggressive, right? And most of the time they are, but it requires real patience to beat them and you cannot play their game. And you're going to ask what their game is. Their game is to aggressively rush until it doesn't work. And then plan B for most shotgunners is, all right, I'm going to hover this doorway. And they will do that for one, maybe even two minutes. Not even joking. Someone will just Warlock flew for Hunter Jump that same doorway for two minutes, waiting you to get impatient, angry that they're using a shotgun and be like, man, screw this dude. I'm going to go slide in. Nope. There's a good chance you're going to lose it because they can switch either side of the doorway and you're going to rely on a fast reaction time or a fast recovery reaction on the opposite side. Odds are not in your favor. So even if you get them dead to rights, weak, If you don't have a grenade to clean up or whatever, don't play their game. Don't run out of that doorway. You're going to have to find a new way. That's my advice for dealing with shotguns, at least. That's the simplest tip, but I think it makes a world of a difference. Because the more people who don't play that game, the more shotgunners I don't think will resort to that almost, uh, what's the word, artificially extending the game strategy. Because it really doesn't accomplish anything if I don't go under the doorway. I mean, that's well and good here, but there's a guy right over there. I see him on the radar. I really want to go get him, and you're telling me I should not go through the doorway. I mean, what are my options at that point? What should I be thinking instead? I know, okay, he's there. Good. Okay, time for me to do what? Time for me to work with a teammate. Even if it's a random and quick play or whatever, you two don't have to be communicating. Just use them to to go through first. (laughs) <laughs> no, you're not going to bait him. You're gonna <laughs> go in with him. This is going to be this is going to be simultaneous. One of you is going to die worst case. Well, maybe both of you worst case if this guy's a shotgun god, but let's just say that we're all on even playing field. We're all even skill. Worst case he kills one of you, but at least he's going to get punished. He has to deal with two simultaneous targets, which is a lot more difficult than just one. Hmm. That's simple. Is there any particular loadout? Like if you were to build a loadout that is specifically, let's say, you know, you're playing quick play and you are going up against a lobby of exclusively hold forward shoulder charge and shotgun Titans. What's your loadout? And you're not going to play that game. What's your loadout that you're going to use to counter that? I either bring a bigger shotgun. (laughs) (laughs) Deal. I can bring Fighting Lion to just a straight wall bang them anytime I see red on the radar, right? Because chances are they're going to run straight through that door so I can have a Lion primed and ready to go. Could be 100 off their health easily, which is an easy cleanup for anything. I could use Telesto and start uh, pocketing the bolts at the edges of doorways. I could try to use my team to play for power. Go Tractor Cannon. (laughs) Colony works wonders too because it forces them in the air. Um, I can use Chaperone, right? Because that's a precision shotgun that shuts them down from way further than they're going to one bang you. Mm-hmm. Aaron Tool does a good job. I, I think there's plenty of counters to shotgun. I did a formal video on this, but at the end of the day, if you personally don't feel that there is a counter to a shotgun, you need to learn to do it better. 
I think you could probably say say that for most things, right? We all got access to pretty much the, the same thing. The thing is, though, is once you start becoming a better shotgun, you can use that playbook in reverse to now counter them. And the and only way to understand that playbook is to become a decent shotgunner. So you're saying to destroy what I hate, I must first become them. Correct. Some deep shit right there. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I, I, I have a little game I want to play, but before we get to that, um, let's talk about armor real quickly. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of obvious stuff there, right? A lot of real standout exotics, maybe, maybe nothing too new. Um, but when you're putting together an armor build, um, kind of talk me through the process. What are, what are you starting with and what decisions are you making along the way? Um, I base my armor builds these days around my super. Because those really turn the tide in the competitive playlist. They're almost too frequent. And I'm sure that's like a knee-jerk reaction to the community, not wanting to nerf that sort of thing. But all right, I'll, I'll play the game. <laughs> I'm building my entire subclass armor build around the super. So for Titan, that's Doomfang Pauldron. For Warlock, that's the Stag. I'll explain that when I get to it. And Hunter, if, if it was possible under RNG, I would want Frosties, but... I work with what I got. Sure. Hey, you and me both, man. I am. I abuse a perk called uh, called Dynamo. It's recently nerfed, but it's still very, very good. It's like rewarding you a kill just for using your class ability, which is already a benefit in its own. Talk to me about the stag, please, because yeah, we can't let that go. Yeah, a lot of people are not on this stag tip, including I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say Swain and myself. I don't know about Bonesy, but actually I know he definitely is not talking about the stag right now. Uh, I had to Google it. Maybe you are too. Tell me what is up with the stag. If you take critical damage, you get half your rift back, and that's the longest cooldown of the class abilities. So you almost don't have to run any class ability mods whatsoever because to get your ability back, all you have to do is get critically damaged twice. Not self-induced, though. Not going to ricochet the wall and get your rift back. Are you pairing this with dynamo redistribution to convert those into your Absolutely. super? Absolutely, and it doesn't even stop there. I'm pairing this with weapons that empowering rift may make a significant time to kill difference. <laughs> Would you care to share those or are you going to keep enjoying them for a bit longer? Oh, absolutely not. I need to share this. I want okay. people to use the entire sandbox. I, I don't want them to feel limited to just Ace of Spades and a Badlander or Bygones and a Mindbenders. It's what I All see right. most of my comment section thinking the game's full of when there's so much more that's competitive. All but, right. Well, so with, with Empowering Rift, right, it's about just tipping a gun into that point where it's it's one shot less right it's not two-thirds of a shot it's not a little splash damage from a teammate it is something that's going to push it from three to two or two to one what does that look like we're going to start with the obvious stir and drain now i know (laughs) that double primary someone's already going to be like man this cami cakes guy doesn't know anything no no you were thinking of just the time to kill a stirm or drang, but not them together. So this is where the beauty of the combo happens. Use drang to shut down your shotgunner. You get an overpowered uh, stern round. You shoot them once with that. You switch to drang and clean them up, which should be very easy because it's only going to be one bullet if you headshot with the stern. So now instead of shooting two stern shots, which is uh, slow, you shoot one stern one drain, try to have your handling or sprint cancel into that drain to get an even faster time to kill. I have a handling mod on my drain for that reason. And you can keep that cycle going forever. But let's say you have a very fortunate grenade tag, two people are weak, and you clean both of them up with drain. Well, now you can put an empowering rift down and now you have a pocket sniper rifle, the Sturm overcharge. It will one tap people. <laughs> and so the idea is <laughs> hold on a second here. You're telling me that if I've got a charged round in my stern and I'm standing in an empowering rift, what what does that hit for? Easily over 200. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go on. Sip of tea. Anyhow, yeah, that combo is disgusting. You can even switch off a drain immediately when you see special with something like the Titan with inertia override, slide into the bullet and get your one vein. But that sounds a little complicated, which is why I like the stag, because you always have your empowering rift, because you're always going to be in gunfights. 
So I just throw the thing down whenever I really feel like it. Even when I feel like it's only going to give me a marginal advantage in a gunfight, I'll throw it down. But now I throw it down when there's someone around a wall or something so I could take advantage of Dynamo. I wish Drang had Threat Detector, but I put that on my Crooked Fang so that I can just pull my Crooked Fang out. And anytime I see Threat Detector pop up, throw in the Rift. And so I get my Dynamo Super Energy. I'm all sitting snug and happy with my pocket sniper rifle, Sturm. I can use it like that. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about other combos. Don't want to spend the entire day on Sturm and Drink. <laughs> Somebody's been reading his perks. Yes, please. So we got the Fighting Lion, of course. It's already a one-hit direct impact, but it's going to hurt even more with splash damage. And yeah, this goes all the way back to the Snipe Lion combo. With the Bite of the Fox, aggressive frame, yeah, it, it can one-shot very, very low resilience. It might be zero or one, but you still so see people out there like that. And so if you know a team's running that, you can give them the ultimate punishment of just shooting them in the toe every single time. <laughs> <laughs> but Great. it continues to get worse, my friends. Cool. So now we don't want to use the fighting lion. We're going to use not forgotten. There's a, a bug with the gun where if you if you face somebody with terrible connection, Magnificent Howl will not proc. So you hit 57 three times to the face, they don't die. With Empowering Rift, you're going to hit 69. Memes aside, it's going to three-tap. And uh, even if Magnificent Howl doesn't proc, you're still going to three-tap them. And then but the connection will kick in later, damage referee or whatever you want to call it, and it'll gift you Magnificent Howl to use on your next target, which you can then leave the rift and dump truck somebody in two shots. <laughs> but I took away Fighting Lion. We now have a free exotic slot to use. Let's go use Whisper of the Worm, because it is the highest impact snipe and will body shot people in your empowering rift. Pretty much regardless of their resilience, I'm finding more often than not it, it kills. So it seems like you're you're viewing empowering rift as like like having head seeker on a pulse rifle almost right like it is it is going to help when you're hitting body shots instead of crits it is going to just boost everything up and make what could have been a little bit unreliable at first that much more likely to 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 get that kill before before they hit you. Yes, the entire perspective has uh, shifted with Forsaken because special weapon instant kill weapons have been added. So even if you have no health whatsoever, there's still a chance you can instant kill your opponent, which is why I value Empowering Rift over healing. Because even if I'm in a healing rift, I can still get sniped. But if I'm in an empowering rift and can now body shot you with the snipe, that's much more preferable. Well, and there's a different gameplay flow to it, right? Like when you have that healing rift, oftentimes it's going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Pop the rift. Okay. Well, I'm, my health is now slowly recharging. <laughs> I mean, and how I mean, many times do you now, like, but- well, okay. But I mean, like if I see a, a warlock who's standing behind a not very large box and I see that little bit of rift dropped there, I'm like, okay, he's hurt and probably just finished his animation. Like, You got a small window, but you can definitely hurt him before he heals right. up. Versus an empowering rift, you are in the beginning or maybe in the middle of your engagement, you're bringing that out and you're using your class ability that previously was a, a, you know, a passive thing or sort of a desperation thing, yep. using it at the beginning of the fight to turn that fight in your favor. Right, you can use it before or you can run around the corner while you're weak and throw it down and be like, all right, now I only have to aim for the body. Good luck. Great. <laughs> Great. Oh, man, I am I'm so excited to pull the stag out of my vault. I never thought I would say that word. Sturm and drink. Get the overcharge, throw the rift, and just rub your hands together and wait. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, I uh, I want to I want to play a little game. Um, one thing that I enjoy watching your YouTube videos is that when you put together a build, or maybe I mean you don't even sort of put it together. You just kind of yeah, let's, let's use this, this, and this. Um, but you you then very clearly explain your thought process for how you're going to use these choices to your advantage. One thing that I've I've enjoyed so much is watching you use subclasses that I think like oh that's bad. I don't use that one. Whatever. But um, that's not PvP one, whatever. And seeing how you're taking advantage of the perks there to do to do things I didn't even think of. I mean, Special K has done this as well. Um, this was 
Um, you know, I was looking for, for a lot of the sort of same hints. So what I would like to do, I want to call out a couple subclass paths. I've got five of them picked out here. Okay. Um, and I picked these because I don't think people use them too much in the crucible. I'm wondering if you were to go into the crucible with one of these subclasses, what are you going to pair it with? What perks are you going to be focusing? How does it affect your choice of exotic, of super? And what should people try doing with this subclass that maybe they, they wouldn't think to do? So in other um, words, how to unlock latent potential of the subclass? Uh, that sounds great. Or just um, um, non-latent, but I'm not very good with it potential as well. <laughs> uh, take a pick. Well, to preface it, like I don't think all the classes are equally balanced, but I think that's what makes some of them strong is because nobody even understands what they do because they're so underutilized that it actually ends up equalizing that advantage despite going in at a disadvantage. That's it, right? Like even if you're not using a subclass, if you die to it enough times, you start to become fluent in how it works. Mm -hmm. Most people know exactly where that grenade will one shot you from the Void Walker, for instance. They don't mm -hmm. even have to test it themselves. Um, well, I uh, I don't know if I've gotten killed with this one in PvP. And well, maybe once or twice with the super. Um, but this is one of the new ones: uh, Warlock, Stormcaller control so this is the new middle tree this is the uh the kamehameha burst um talk to me about this one i call this subclass the disrespectful nova bomb <laughs> because where you're probably supposed to save nova bomb for like a shutdown or something you'll see a player just dump it on a player for seemingly no reason right the other player didn't have a super they didn't have power ammo they weren't contesting a flag or a power position this guy just wanted a kill that's exactly what I use Chaos Reach for. And just like I talked about that stag dynamo combo, that's when the beauty comes out of the uh, Chaos Reach. So let me walk you through just a normal game. You start off, no super energy. Stag's on. Dynamo boots on. My loadout to take advantage of the empowering rifts, on. I get ionic traces from kills. My super energy is building and building. Right when I hit that two thirds mark, I'm switching gear. I'm switching to Geomag stabilizers from the stag. And what that does for people who don't know, when you're at two thirds of your super energy, it will charge the remaining one third just for sprinting in a couple seconds. So I don't even have to go <laughs> for my full bar, just two thirds. Oh, but it gets better than that. Get ready. Now, like I said, this is the disrespectful Nova Bomb. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. One unfortunate player on the enemy team, I'm gonna run towards them, smack my super on it, and then immediately disengage. And when I do that, <laughs> I'm left with one third of my super bar. And so now Geomags are off, Stag's back on. All I have to do is charge one third now. Then I'm at two thirds, Geomags are back on, run to get my super. Guess what? Another unfortunate soul on the enemy team. He's gonna get hit. There's a quick boop. You know, the, the reason this evil build was concocted is because in the comp playlist, I would get these hunters dodging into a wall with dynamo just to get like a blade barrage or something. And so I was like, how do I beat this? How do I beat this disrespectful Nova mom? There you go. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm so happy with this game. I'm already so happy with how this is going. All right. Next one up. Uh, this is not one of the new ones, but not a very popular one, at least in PVP. Uh, I'm talking about Way of the Aggressor. This is the Bottom Tree Sentinel. What's up with this one? This one, okay. So it rewards you for being aggressive in the name, right? It wants you to be surrounded by enemies. It wants you to rack up fast kills. It gives you a shoulder charge, which in my opinion is a mobility tool. But with a certain exotic, it becomes key to the entire build. The idea with the super is that you're going to have two shield throws and that a shield throw kill replenishes a little bit of that energy, right? So you throw both shields, they'll replenish, and you might even get one full shield back to throw three in a row if you get enough kills. But this exotic called Doomfang Pauldron, if you tag anybody with the shield throw, it extends your super. And so you're getting more shield throws back from getting shield throw kills. The magnetism on these shields have been increased. And so you straight up will Captain America wipe the entire team back to back if you do it right. And at the very, very end of your super, you can toss the Frisbee just randomly down a hole and maybe even guarantee a kill or three or four. 
So you're basically spending as much of the round impossible in super. Right. And Doomfang actually facilitate this play style because if you get an ability melee kill, you get one fourth of your super energy. And just like I said, I have like my standard stag asshole build on my uh, warlock. I have my standard jerk build on my Titan, which includes Doomfang Pauldron. And so I hover between top tree and bottom tree as necessary. Again, I said I use that shoulder charge more as a mobility tool. And when I have the option, go for the kill. Because it's very, very dangerous to try to shoulder charge a smart opponent when you know they have a shotgun, when you know they're hovering a doorway and, you know, I'm playing every good tactic possible. You Not have to catch them with their better. pants down to take advantage. Or you have to be extremely stupid. And it ends up working because they think there's no logical way you're just going <laughs> to run in there. Oh, my God, he just ran in there. And you're rewarded with one-fourth of your super energy. So this is when you start pairing it with super mods, impact mods, and a perk that whenever you make orbs off double kills, it replenishes your melee. I wouldn't give up Dynamo for the ability to throw a shield to get a little bit of melee energy. I'd still keep Dynamo because I think it's more macro efficient to get super energy from the barricade. Plus, when someone gets impatient and wants to shock on you with the... By running through the barricade, they get immediately low health and you can just punch them. Of course, Dynamo, I'm sorry, the Doomfang only works whenever you get an ability melee kill. So that only works on top tree to kill them out of the barricade. But you can still run into a wall with the sword hilt, charge your shoulder charge. You have full visibility around the corner, switch away from the sword hilt to any weapon, and then you can shoulder charge. So that's sort of a safety strat to securing that one fourth super energy. So all you need is four shoulder charges to get the super, but in all reality, you're only going to need two of them with the super mods. Already I'm starting <laughs> to gather a lesson. If you are willing to change it up, fluently change what weapons you're using, fluently change what exotic you're wearing, um, yeah, not get locked into holding forward and pressing the trigger on the current thing. A whole new world opens up. Let's keep on moving. This is fun. Uh, this one, uh, Swain, I know you're a fan of this one. Uh, let's talk about Siege Breaker. This is the bottom tree Sunbreaker class. Sunbreaker. Okay. So Siege Breaker totally revolves around your abilities. If you like Sunbreaker grenades, this is the subclass for you. Because your grenade kills not only recover health, but make a sunspot. And you would think that's already good enough on its own, right? Sunspot burns enemies who walk over it, might kill them, might even create another sunspot. But if you pass through, not even stand in, if you pass through the sunspot, you get a couple extra seconds of increased ability cooldown or decreased, whatever's faster. <laughs> and if you stand in the sunspot, that effect lingers. So you can throw your barricade up and just uh, stay all toasty in your sunspot, getting your abilities back to eventually create more sunspots. And the super also drops sunspots. So... I recommend Armamentarium with this because it's nice to get a random sun sh uh, sunspot from your melee. Then you throw your barricade, chill, get both your grenades. Sometimes I have both grenades up and I see a sunspot and I just shrug my shoulders, throw a nade across the map, like, wonder if this will hit anybody. Because I know I'm going to get back. <laughs> sure. It's funny as hell when that grenade just like Happy Gilmore golf ball bounces off the ceiling or something and lands perfectly <laughs> to hit the entire team. And that's you when go, you yeah. tell your YouTube live commentary, like, I meant to do that, but you really didn't. No, I'm joking. I would be honest. In it. <laughs> but Yeah. No, I think you get a, a free ice cream cone at the clubhouse if you land one of those. Exactly. Um, okay. Here's one that I for sure have been, I, and I remember it so clearly. I've been killed with this one in PvP exactly once. I don't think anyone knows how to play against this one. Let's talk about the new... Arkstrider Middle Tree. This is the current subclass. What's up with this one? That thing is dirty on both controller and mouse and keyboard. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. All right. <laughs> the the melee you lets you here? cover a simultaneous option, which is disgustingly powerful in the shotgun meta. If you slide and then activate your melee after a short sprint, it'll send like an arc, um, what would you call it? Like an arc wave across the floor that does a mm -hmm. pretty decent chunk of damage. And so you can send that arc wave one direction and aim at another direction. And so you cover two possibilities Whoa. at once. So that arc wave is going to be moving in the direction of your slide and your melee is going to be head towards the melee. Right. 
On controller, this is very, very advantageous, especially with a perk like traction for faster spinning on a lower sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And on mouse and keyboard, as you can imagine, with it being snappy, it's naturally good with it. But interestingly enough, certain mechanics in this game are slightly different on mouse and keyboard. And I think I talked about this on like my very first D2 uh, episode here. But even with like sword hilts, it'll swipe where you're looking, not where you're walking. So if you move to the right, but you're looking forward, the sword swipe will Hmm. swipe forward. So never forget to immediately test these sorts of interactions with all the subclass options possible because they're different. Shoulder charge, it's exactly where you're aiming with the mouse. Whereas controller, it just keeps your forward movement so you can aim to the right, but still shoulder charge in that initial direction, for example. So always, always, always double check with like this arc wave melee. Uh, now this ebb and flow perk, um, this one seems complicated. So with this one, basically once you've damaged a target with an arc ability, they're electrified. And then a melee from that point is going to do all sorts of fun stuff. You get the disorientation perk. You're going to be charging your, uh, your, your abilities up. I mean, how, how, how do you approach your gameplay to try and take advantage of this? To be honest, I ignore it completely because the super overwhelm is overwhelmingly like the obvious choice there. And the reason for that is because everyone and their mother plays Blade Barrage. So this is, in a way, this is a shutdown super. You're using this in response to someone else's super. Right. This is the middle finger to Blade Barrage. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like I've got a middle finger already to Blade Barrage. I actually have two of them. They're installed on either hand. Um, but... <laughs> I would be interested in another option. I mean, there's um, cool so this, Blade Barrage uh, builds too. They're off meta, uh, but anyhow, we're on Arc Strider. Uh, well, so so I, I guess to round this one out, um, is do you have a favorite exotic for for this class, the subclass? Um, my RNG has been terrible. If I had Frosties, particularly with the distribution, RNGs is please. <laughs> if I had Frosties, I would use those on every Hunter class, but I don't. So now I use my next best option. It's a custom rolled bow tracer, and that's solely just to have an easier time with certain weapons. I, I know it sounds like a very lame and boring Lunas thing. Howl and not forgotten? Does it combo with those? No, not really. Hmm. But you never know when someone's going to be at that cusp of it helping. And not to mention it also marks targets. Not even going to get into the uh, one-eyed mask. That's for another day. We can spend an hour talking about how great it is. But uh, yeah, bow tracer marking targets is super, super helpful. Because you know how I said earlier, like never play the shotgunners game because they could be at opposite sides of the doorway. Well, bow tracer, you can see them. So you actually have a pretty good chance of just outright beating them. Dig it. Dig it. Uh, well, I would like to talk about the one-eyed mask with you, uh, let's say six months from now after we all have one, but you're just going to, as soon as I get it the day after it's going to get nerfed. So I've accepted that fate. (laughs) I will be the the martyr for uh, the destiny community. You're the watermark for when it's getting nerfed. Yeah. The bungee has a, like a screen with my inventory on it at the office. It's like (laughs) plastered there over the entire uh, cubicle room or whatever. It's like, yep. does Cammy have one eyed mask yet? Hit the Not button. A, yeah, exactly. One big red <laughs> it's button. Done. Like it's Cosmo, done. you do the honors. <laughs> I uh that sounds crazy, but like, I don't know. You you make a lot of videos. <laughs> you tell us these things. Maybe maybe not. Um, all right. Well, I was going to ask, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you a choice for this last one. I was going to ask about that new middle tree sentinel because you just don't see that one a ton, but you have piqued my interest. What is an off meta blade barrage? Well, it's a good thing you avoided the code of the commander because I just recently maxed it out. And next time <laughs> Iron Bandit rolls around, you're going to expect me uh, to experiment with that one. I want to genuinely try the PvE strat of being like, all right, everyone behind my shield. And then they get weapons <laughs> of light, and we just like walk <laughs> casually shooting at the enemy. But in reality, I'm probably going to get blade barrage and it's going to blow up in my face. But it might yeah. make for an even funnier video if that happens. Okay. Well, so so other side of Blade Barrage, I'm you know just running the five Paragon mods. Talk me through it. What are you doing here? Ahamkara's spine is the dirtiest thing you can do on Blade Barrage. <sighs> Man, you making me Google this stuff. All right. 
Talk me through it. It gives you an enhanced trip mines that stays on the wall for 30 seconds, which is already a great defense against shotgunners, but never underestimate how income and hot a shotgunner is going to be. They're going to be full speed. So you think to place this trip mine out like, you know, protecting a doorway. No, place that like five feet within the doorway because they're going to be flying into it. That's my tip for the trip mine, at least. Uh, and also it has enhanced like armor or health or whatever of the trip mine. So instead of it taking 100 damage, it now takes 200. So unfortunately, you can't do the very sexy toss a trip mine, shoot it out of the air and like spike damage all over. Or just spike it at the floor and shoot it off the floor to get an instant detonate. Can't do that. Would be pretty cool. I don't think I would have a warlock buddy who would drop me an empowering rift just to style on somebody. But it would be cool. I'm taking applications. You can go in my Discord and sign up to throw empowering rifts for me. But uh, anyhow... It also has a more forgiving blast radius, the trip mine. So if you uh, follow that tip of just place the trip mine a couple feet in front of where you initially thought the right place was to put it, at least in my experience, that extra blast radius is going to hurt them so much that it does 160 damage. And so you only need to follow up with 40 damage, which coincidentally is uh, body shots from the Luna's Howl. So what is it about <laughs> Blade Barrage that fits in with this? Or are you just you just getting mileage out of Gunslinger like Oh, no one hell else no. This is all Blade Barrage. Okay, it gets okay. three throwing knives, a dodge to recover those throwing knives, and a super that is a lot of knives. This is like straight out of Gordon Ramsay's kitchen. But <laughs> the way that young Ahamkara's spine works is that... If you tag them with any solar damage, you get one third of your grenade back. But it's it stacks with the amount of hits from solar you get. And remember what I just said, you throw three solar knives with your ah. ability and the trip mine hit itself counts as a solar ability. And your dodge <laughs> gets those three knives back and your super is giant exploding solar knives. So. If you have a good string of trip mine tosses and even one out of the three knives hitting your opponent and you're dodging to get the, the next three knives, you can have like a really synergistic combo of just randomly throwing trip mines across the map, not even worrying about getting it back because you know you're about to just throw knives or super somebody. And of course, shards of Galanor might make for a better swap when you have a super, but I still think it's hilarious to instantly get your trip mine back, especially in the competitive modes where on like a mode like survival, it eventually goes down to a cap point. So if you line the cap point with, let's just say a trip mine, maybe even have a teammate throw a barricade in front of the trip mine, you are cutting off options from the enemy team because now they know they can't step on the point. <laughs> I love it. That sounds uh, extremely aggravating to play against, but maybe it sounds kind of fun. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Oh, man, this is uh, we haven't recorded the uh, front half of the show yet. And I'm thinking we don't really need to because this is uh, you're you're just you're just laying it out here for us. Um, but we got to wrap it up eventually. Swain, what do you got? Home stretch. So obviously we're going to give you a chance to plug all of your stuff. Uh, Twitter and all that, especially YouTube. Um, I want to know if there's any combos of like guns and subclasses because that's one of my favorite parts of watching your youtube videos it's always just it's the best part of destiny there's so it, many it's, options it really is and that's like a great focus for people going forward is like how can i find a weird thing to have fun with but i want to know is there anything weird that you're working on trying out for a video that you want to you want to tease people with um, okay, so this is like we go into the, the labs at private matches, and I am looking for the naughtiest angles with the Thunder Crash Super. <laughs> okay. And when I say an angle, you're thinking, like, that's a super, why do you need an angle? Well, it's because on countdown, there's a bomb that people inevitably have to defuse, and so I think <laughs> it, it would be hilarious to see Superman either coming out of the sky or on a map like Midtown, almost coming out of the ocean onto the plants. <laughs> like straight Aquaman dive out and cancel the planet. Like people will not expect it. It'll be hilarious in a montage. It might even win me a round and give me a win. Oh, that's okay. A good one. You're threading the needle. I love it. I am torn on what exotic to use though, because I don't have one eyed mask. So I will take any suggestions. 
All right. Oh, well, if you haven't that figured is it, a wonderful one to look forward to. <laughs> well, if um, you haven't figured it out by Monday when this episode drops and folks have an exotic suggestion or uh, just want to see what you're all about, where can they find you? Say hello and, and partake of all the goodness you've put out on the Internet. The Rumble playlist. No, <laughs> really. Fuck that. <laughs> May I never run into you there unless it's uh, prepared to lose. I'll start with the uh, easy vanity tag. So we got twitch.tv slash cami kicks, um, discord.gg slash cami kicks. We got youtube.com slash cami kicks gaming and twitter.com slash cami kicks yt. Because my home's really, really on uh, YouTube. But I do Twitch more as just a thank you for people even watching my videos in the first place as more of an option to directly interact with people when, you know, you have just a random uh, question or whatever, and I can just answer it immediately. And sometimes yeah. it's on point, like some of this interview and other times it's just me theory crafting. And then we come up with some brokenly beautiful, disrespectful chaos reach strategy together. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Well, I, I, I can't recommend enough folks check it out. In particular, go watch uh, your YouTube videos where you're doing live commentary as you're playing. There's nothing else like it on YouTube in the Destiny world. And I suspect it's because no one else can play and talk about how they're playing so so simultaneously and, and not have it go to bits. So I finished three of them during this podcast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that clicking was. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on. What a treat. Yeah, thank you, Cammy. I uh, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. As always, I really love the audience you build here. Crucible enthusiast. Man, I wish the entire Destiny population learned to love the Crucible. And I think with the right amount of nurturing and looking for counters and that sort of thing, I think we can do it. I know you did. I That was, that was like homework. I feel like I have homework now. I, I feel like embarrassed that um, I've just been like playing this game. I also feel a little ashamed that yeah. my loadout is so small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, Cammy, Cammy's been, we've been playing Destiny and Cammy's been making Destiny play for him. He's playing 3D chess today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you pulled it out, man. I thought mine was like so so. Uh, I hope you're taking notes. I just go back and listen again. You missed something. I guarantee it. That moved real fast. Uh, hey, thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for listening. Go to crucibleradio.com. Hey, go go support us on Patreon. That yeah. is <laughs> we need some support on Patreon. We have to pay Andrew something. Yep, that's this is how the show gets made. Uh, every little bit helps, and uh, hey, we do a bonus pod every month, and uh, I don't know, they're pretty fun, pretty good. So go check it out, and uh, just uh, you know, stay frosty in general. Just stay, stay, <laughs> frost, stay frost, frostier. Okay. Like what, whatever your current frost level is, get a little frosty. Unless you're super frosty, you can get a little less frosty. You get a little spicy. Balance out the spice and the frost in your life. I guess is what I'm saying. That's our new tagline. Love you. Bye. And I'm Bones. Wait, where did everybody go? Look at my haircut. I'm Bones. Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.